Hello and welcome to my new deck, my favorite deck, my relinquished lockdown deck. Now before I begin describing what each card purposes, let me point the objective of this deck. The object objective is to lock down my opponent so we can't do absolutely anything. And the way I do that is with relinquished. So let's begin. Not the goal. I can either use him, stall my opponent out and let him take the thousand or two thousand damage before he gets rid of them. Or I can take him back with the Linquish and have 3,000 attack. Chaos Sorcerer. I like him over BLS because I can get Chaos Sorcerer after I special summon him with Magical Exemplar. Well, BLS, once it's in the grave, there's nothing I can do with it. So, Chaos Sorcerer, I could use him a little bit better, I feel. He might not be able to have that a second ability as BLS, but. I do like what he can do. But now on to Magical Example. She is my comeback card. For every spell card I activate, she gets two spell counters, remove one to get one relinquish. So, just one, activating one spell card, I can get two relinquishes back from the grave, which can really help me when I need it. Or if I uh, get, um, just keep on adding them up, I could get a Chaos Sorcerer, or the other one back. I can run three, yet I like to run two because I'm trying to shorten this, this uh, make this deck a little bit smaller. I might even take out a battle fader. But yeah, there's some op with this deck. You have a lot of options with certain cards, like what do you, how many you want to run. Now onto the next card, Manju of the Ten Thousand Hands. He's the search card. I recommend going for a Black Illusion instead of a Relinquish with this because of Preparation of Rights. So, when you get, get out what you need, if you have a Black Illusion, go for a Relinquish because you just have to get Relinquish out as quickly as possible. The longer you wait, the more likely things could get ugly. I think I'll have it up on Relinquish. I can't get rid of Wheeling Cush Party. That's right. Anyway, Jin. This is definitely a must have in this deck. You can run as many as you can. So, three. If I Ritual Summon, Relinquish, this Jin, then my opponent can't Special Summon, which could create a huge advantage for me. I can just. It really hurts my opponent. can lock them down like a Blue Eyes deck. They can't do anything. Maiden's useless. Yu Jin. You can take Maiden. Maiden can't do anything. You can attack Maiden, and she can negate it, but you can't get a blue. She can't. They can't summon a blue one. Or for a Chaos deck, they can't special summon. This is really good. Like, practically any deck slows down the moment you use Jin. So, really lay on the Jin. And that's also the reason why I don't run an advanced Rich Ward, because I don't want to. Because I would never go for it. I'd always want to be able to go for a Jin. Two again. Just two search and So she's pretty much a fourth. That and I could get out a Lovethine or a Zenmai. Depending on what the occasion calls for. Mushroom. To stall. Just a fun little card that I can set. And just have my opponent slow down his attacking for a little bit. Kick a bio. Uh, this is a spirit. You summon him. You get a level one from the grave. And when this card is leaves the field, that card is banished. Now the best card to take is Mystic Piper. Be it if you need to, you can take Relinquished and have a minus one effect happen. And it also goes really well with Deck Devastation Virus if you can get Relinquished up to two thousand or more. On to the next card, Mystic Piper. As I said, this is the best card to take with Mystic with uh, King of Bio. You can also summon him back from the grave with Magical Example. But pretty much its effect is you tribute him, send him to the grave, draw a card. And if it's a level one, draw another. And as you can see, like from here, two of my relinquishes are all level one monsters. So I have a pretty good chance of drawing him. Now you may be wondering why don't I run the other Kinkabiros because if I have one in my hand and I draw another 
it's one that's just sits there and it's a, I don't need this card. And so I only want two. If this is one of the other cards that you can switch out. In fact, I might update this deck where I take Battle Fader out for Mystic Piper. Maybe. Oops. Battle Fader? Battle Fader, he's just to lay down. And then, if you end up getting a Relinquish or a Block Illusion, you can tribute him. So I run him instead of, um, I run him instead of Swift Scarecrow, because I feel he's more effective in this situation. Effect Vader, to lock down my opponent, and it's the only tuner in this deck. So, she has some need. And here, if I, like, if I have Manju out, and I have one or two effect in my hand, I can normal summon and then get a caster out. So that could be really nice. And then here's the main card, Relinquished. Let me go over the effect. You take a, uh, you target one of your opponent's monsters, take it, you equip it to this card, it gains the attack and defense equal to that card's attack and defense. Then, if that card is attacked, if this card is attacked, your opponent also takes the battle damage, and this card is not destroyed. So if you can protect it, it can be really, really effective. Now onto spells. Part of Endless, you can send two cards from either player's graveyard back to the deck. Most of the time I use it for these two cards, because I want to keep Wearing Cruise and Relic of Illusion in the grave. Yet sometimes I might send a relinquish back to the deck. It depends on what I have. Like if I can get one out with magical exemplar, I won't. But, uh, preparation right. This searches for a relinquish and gets a spell card, a ritual spell card back. So this could be really good to get out two relinquishes in one turn, especially if you have one gin. So it can be absolutely effective. And then the ritual spell card to summon relinquish. 3 MSTQs, so that way I can destroy a mill force or any tra trap card that's really hurting me. Wind Chalice to hurt my opponent's in, uh, effects, so that way I don't get hurt that much. Then when Ritual Catch, this does negate Relinquish's other effect where your opponent takes the battle damage, yet that could be good if you have less life points, because then you can attack with a weaker monster, like if you have Summon Skull and your opponent has blue eyes, you can attack, nobody would take any damage, then take his blue eyes. Yet besides that, uh, besides that, I relinquish can't be targeted by uh, effects, and can't be destroyed by monster effects. So like, my Anita Bug, or when I get Magician, I see that a lot, they can't destroy relinquish if this is on the field. And I can also use this to give her, which I normally do, like I summon, activate, get a relinquish back. Very effective. The talk door, the opponent can only attack once, which kind of makes it harder to destroy your relinquish, because you have to attack with multiple monsters. And so even, unless it's like a monster that's a zapper, or they have it where that card can attack twice, and they can't, like not even BLS would be able to because BLS doesn't destroy relinquished. It would destroy the equipped spell card. So it makes it a lot harder and it kind of limits them. Now yes it does limit me, but I should be able to um, attack and do enough damage to my opponent where I don't have to worry about it. Up to camouflage, this is really neat card because it allows relinquished act directly. So if you have level goal, that's 3000. Can just pull one nice combo. Nice combo. Then here is another important card: Secret Village of the Spellcasters. So I cannot activate any spell cards. As long as relinquished, effect failure. This is Piper, magical example. Chaos Sorcerer is on the field. They will not be able to activate any spell cards unless they summon a spellcaster. Now here's the now here's the weakness though. If they do get rid of those monsters then you can activate them. So, you might be in a pickle, like if you plan on uh, ritual summoning another relinquish next turn, but then all your spellcasters are gone, you're in a tight position, because now, act now you can't activate spell cards. But then again, that's why 
You can use Hinkapayo to get him back, then, act, then, uh, then activate Black Illusion. Or you can just summon her, she's level 4, who you could be able to just summon her. So I don't really run into that problem because I've bumped this deck up with so many spellcasters. And if you want, you can run 3. Yet I normally don't have come across that. And if you really are stuck with this card, you can and you can set the other one, and it would de it destroy the this one. So, so the counter effect to it doesn't really happen. Now, deck devastation virus. I use this as decoy. Yet if I can, yet if I know the language is going to be destroyed, I might activate just to hurt my opponent, and so that way I can see what's in their hand for the next three turns. Yeah, most of the time they just draw spell cards, so I'm kind of in pickle with that. And then traps them. I find this card is better in Wild Decree because this is how I mainly rock down my opponent's battle phase. So I don't want to negate my own traps. Yet, I feel like as for most traps, I get rid of them with MST. Traps done. It says if they activate a meal for us, bam. Now scrub grade. Another really good card if you do it right. It blocks on your opponent's own actually. If during either player's battle phase, you can send one card you control to the graveyard and the battle phase. So if you have a maiden equipped to this card and they have a blue eyes out somehow, you can send the maiden to the graveyard and then end the battle phase. And then unless they activate a spell card or some other effect where they can destroy Remanquish, you can take that blue eyes next turn. So it could be really effective on uh, locking down your opponent. There are times when you are just where you will be stuck with just this card and you'll be setting cards and then sending those to the grave. Yet most of the time that doesn't happen. And so I run two. Now the ex now onto the extra deck. The extra deck isn't as important, yet they're just cards to have just in case. Stardust, really hard card to get out in with this deck, yet I have them just be useful if I do get them out. <coughs> caster, he is easier to get out because it's a Manju effect to a caster and he destroys pretty much any card. So these two, so I run two of them just because he's useful. Armory Arm, just in case I have like a Marshmallow or a Gen out and I feel like it's better, I can equip it to relinquish and it gain a thousand attack and it can do some extra damage so I find it's useful if I can get it out like I have Gen out, some an effect available Synchro then use Jin from the graveyard to special summon Relinquished. And it gives Relinquished an extra thousand attack. And then now I'll do XYZ, which I mostly get out of a champion, just to lock down my opponent's trap cards. Utopia, I tend to get him out better because he locks down my opponent's attacks better. And if I have Scrub or Aiden, I am in that situation where I'm just getting rid of cards. He can activate. He's pretty much just this fit. Like a better than. No. Like a. He's pretty similar to Scrub. Yeah, if. You know, then I might get out. World Champion. Flagship. If my opponent has some weird card out that I dislike, I might get rid of it using this one. And my opponent would take a thousand damage. So. It's just a card to have. My opponent is laying on the special summoning. I could summon him to take it. Just so that way it's gone. While well, Belgium, this is um, if you're getting stuck and you need to get a card to your hand, you can send this to get uh, to draw a relinquish next turn or send a gym to the grave. So that could be. So this could be effective for try for whatever you're trying to do. Yeah, you don't normally have your yeah. Special something doesn't really or XYZ something doesn't really happen unless you until after you get in the lock 
where most of your search cards, like Manju, are in the grave, and you don't want to get rid of her because if something does happen to relinquish, you can get him back. It does do. As a, another part of influence. And I'm a Now these are the guys I get out more often into the two guy. As I am defending the offensive. Second. Defensive. Then minus. And the side deck. Side deck pretty much revolves around all is your opponent trap heavy or attack heavy. If they're attack heavy, add another scrap rate. If they're trap heavy, I do ten uh two foil the creason and then just lay down on the spell cards like Vengeful Box Beard and Dark Door and Level Beard. And then opt to camouflage so that way you can get past the defense. Besides that there's a couple of other cards like Mage Power. There's when you normally have like a lot of back loop back loop, so Mage Power is very useful. Which will weapon I feel isn't as good as Mage Power. Because you have more back row, so you can gain 2,000 instead. And besides that, you have preparation of rights. Rights, which if you need more power searching, that would be a card. Or if you feel you relinquish is being targeted a lot, true page. Well then, thank you for watching my favorite deck. My favorite deck. And please rate, subscribe, and comment. Thank you.